Hey, uh, it looks like we're gonna need to get some gas. Huh. Nah, you can go well below E before this thing will quit. We'll make it to the airport. Uh, you're a little low on fuel here, too. Yeah, we'll be okay. Same as a car. We can push it a little. We're only flying to the next town. <laughs> okay, time out. You're saying to yourself, I would never do this. And hopefully you wouldn't, but some do. According to the NAW report, there are about 70 fuel management accidents each year. Managing fuel in an airplane seems like a no-brainer. To fly from point A to point B, you need to bring enough gas in your tanks. Seems simple enough, but why do fuel management errors continue to happen? Let's take a closer look at some common problem areas. On average, more than 60% of fuel-related accidents are attributed to poor flight planning, more specifically, inaccurate estimation of fuel requirements. Personal minimums are one way to combat this. They act as your safety net, a boundary you've set for yourself where you say, I'm going to make sure I don't go beyond that point. For example, the regulations provide a minimal margin of safety, while the Air Safety Institute recommends landing with at least one hour of fuel on board for every flight. You can approach the flight planning process with your personal minimums in mind. For many of us, using an online flight planner or mobile app is an indispensable part of our flight planning routine. One example is AOPA's Flight Planner, which includes predictive fuel planning tools and warnings that show approximately how much fuel you will have burned at certain points along your route. With the ability to see the time you have left before needing to refuel, you can choose your fuel stops along the way. Whatever tool you're using, when it comes to fuel, it's always better to plan conservatively. Commit yourself to landing at a predetermined fuel stop at or before the point where you will have reached your personal minimum. During flight planning, you should also take into account the winds aloft and any weather that could potentially alter your route. If it becomes necessary to divert your flight to avoid thunderstorms, you will need enough fuel to reach an alternate airport. You may already do thorough flight planning before a long cross-country trip, but what about those short flights to the practice area or a nearby airport? Is fuel planning really worth the hassle? Hmm. The purpose of this flight was to get fuel from a nearby airport. The pilot did not do a pre-flight inspection, telling his passengers that he had enough fuel for the five-minute flight. <laughs> Shortly after taking off and on the downwind leg of the traffic pattern, the engine lost power. The pilot tried to make a forced landing on the runway, but the airplane hit the ground short of the runway, which caused substantial damage. Even if you know you have enough fuel to make a quick flight, there are other factors to consider. You should always plan for unexpected circumstances that could keep you aloft longer than you had hoped, such as a delay in landing clearance due to congested airspace, landing gear problems, or a disabled aircraft causing an unexpected airport closure. It helps to begin with a known quantity of fuel before your departure. Let's face it, fuel gauges in GA airplanes are notoriously inaccurate. What the regulations require in accuracy is the source of some debate, but ultimately, it's best to not depend solely on your gauges. The solution for this is simple. To minimize any uncertainty, consider having the tanks topped off before every flight, unless you're absolutely restricted by weight from passengers and cargo. Also, when refueling, make sure you know what type of fuel you are getting. If you suspect you may have an accidental mixture of avgas and jet fuel, it will be nearly impossible to tell just by looking. 100 low lead and jet A mixed together will still appear blue, and once the two fuels blend, they do not separate. Here are a couple of ways to tell the difference. Jet fuel has an odor similar to kerosene. 
If you notice this odor when opening the gas cap or draining samples, you may have contamination. You can also perform the napkin test. Blot a sample of your fuel onto a paper napkin. If it's pure 100 low lead, the sample will dry quickly with no visible residue. If it's a mixture of 100 low lead and Jet A, the sample will leave an oily sheen and it won't evaporate quickly. Ooh. Make sure to be present when your aircraft is being fueled and to double check your receipt to make sure you got the right fuel in the right amount. You can also use AOPA's fuel cards to help prevent misfueling. During pre-flight, make sure to visually check the level of fuel in your tanks. There is no substitute for this. Fuel gauges can and have failed, so a visual fuel check is crucial. You may want to use a calibrated dipstick for increased accuracy. Before departing, the pilot asked his local FBO to fill his main fuel tanks. Unknown to the pilot, the airplane was never fueled. Mm -hmm. The pilot assumed the fueling had happened and did not check the fuel quantity before taking off. Yeah. While in cruising flight, both engines experienced partial power loss. The pilot made a forced landing in an open field with rough terrain, which caused major damage to the wings and fuselage. Sumping your fuel is another critical step, and one in which it's far too easy to just go through the motions without being observant. And while you might expect that you're in good shape as long as you don't see layers of fuel and water, consider the possibility that you may be seeing only water. Make sure you see the telltale blue color before making any assumptions. Check for any small particulate matter as well. You should begin your flight with a key understanding. An engine is basically a pump. It consumes a mixture of fuel and air at a very predictable rate. With this in mind, it's crucial to think of your fuel supply in terms of hours and minutes, not in miles. Put another way, a flight in a strong headwind compared to the same flight with no wind will cover fewer miles in the same amount of time and fuel. At the beginning of every flight, it's a good idea to set a timer or use the panel clock to monitor your time aloft. If your plane has a fuel selector where switching tanks is required, Another good technique is to set a reminder to switch tanks at regular intervals. This keeps your fuel levels even and helps you manage your remaining fuel. A commercial pilot flying a Cessna 152 heading to his home in Georgia experienced a total loss of engine power after about three and a half hours of flying. The pilot made a forced landing to a road and struck a telephone pole with the left wing damaging the airplane and causing serious injuries to the pilot and passenger. As part of the pilot's pre-flight planning, he had looked at the weather along the route of flight, which included a 20-knot headwind. The pilot said that he visually checked the fuel tanks before departure and verified that they were full with a total of 26 gallons. His fuel receipts also confirmed that the airplane was refueled before the trip, the pilot said he had enough fuel on board for the 275 nautical mile flight. The POH stated that the airplane had about 3.1 hours of fuel endurance at cruise power. The engine ran out of fuel after about 3.5 hours. Don't forget to lean the mixture once you reach cruising altitude. Not only are you saving fuel, but the POH assumes that proper leaning has taken place when giving estimates for fuel burn. Again, avoid relying solely on your fuel gauges. They may be inaccurate. Digital fuel monitors can be very precise, but most of them depend on the pilot's accurate input of the amounts loaded. Another factor that can contribute to accidents is having bad fuel management habits. Like our reckless friend, we may have some unconscious behaviors that are reinforced by our daily driving. If we let ourselves carry those daily behaviors into the cockpit, we could be in for trouble. Yahoo! Also, this is a good time to remember that many pilots have gotten themselves in trouble by good old-fashioned get their itis The feeling of wanting to push on a little longer, nope. or the perceived hassle mm -hmm. of landing to get fuel no. before reaching your final destination can be mm -hmm. dangerous. It's a common state of mind that affects even helicopter pilots. Helicopters, known for their ability to land almost anywhere, have crashed due to fuel exhaustion. 
A CFI and student were on a night VFR cross-country flight in a helicopter. While flying over one of the airports along their way, the CFI and student noticed they had low fuel. During pre-flight planning, the CFI had overestimated the cruising speed of the helicopter, and so the total flight time turned out to be longer than they expected. The CFI and student discussed the low fuel situation, and despite being over an airport, decided to not refuel because neither pilot had a credit card. Shortly afterward, the low fuel warning light came on, and a few minutes later, the engine lost total power. The pilot performed an auto rotation, but the helicopter impacted trees and landed hard. The helicopter was badly damaged. So be aware of the temptation to keep flying with known low fuel and resist the urge to press on beyond your comfort zone. The consequences can be much worse than arriving at your destination a bit later than expected. Let's look at one additional area that can cause problems. Errors in operating the aircraft's fuel system cause about one-third of fuel management accidents. These errors include things like choosing an empty tank or incorrectly using boost pumps or transfer pumps. You can combat this by being well-versed in the operation of your fuel system. This is especially true when flying an unfamiliar aircraft. Read the POH thoroughly and know the transfer process. If you accidentally let a tank run dry, a rushed attempt to switch tanks can leave room for mistakes and ultimately starve the engine of fuel. Always monitoring the clock or setting a timer to switch tanks early can put you ahead of the game. Many of the strategies and ideas we presented aren't difficult to understand, but they can be easy to overlook. Like most aspects of flying, fuel management takes a bit of forethought and careful planning. Recognizing the common causes of fuel management accidents and following these tips will help you to get to your destination safely every time you fly.